Shalom, Yashallah, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Yashurala. Call Haloyim Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Harakah Kwadash, for blessing our elders with the spirit of truth so that we may know. Shout out to the Akim and the Akwaf that's keeping the faith in the works. Y'all keep at it. It's your brother Abaya coming at you with more precepts. It's the book of 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. All right, self-explanatory. The end of all things is at hand. All right, you just peep what's going on around the world. You can, you can clearly see it. All right, but we all hopeful in this thing. Right, I can't say tomorrow then it's the end of this place. No, nah, this is... This is a hope. This is all in faith, man. Because we understand that the end of this place is the beginning of ours. All right? Um, let me go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 62. And verse 11, it says, Behold... Yahweh hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of Yahweh. And thou shalt be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. All right, so the end of this place is, presents our salvation. All right, so, yeah, we rooting for it. All right, but... The signs that we seeing, that's, you know, letting us know the times that we're in, like, like it's spoken of in Matthew uh, 24, um, you know, the disciples asked him, what do we need? How, how will we know that it's the end, basically? And he started giving signs. So you got to watch the signs so you can kind of gauge the times that you're in. All right. So with that, I'm let this video play and I'll be back. Let me tell you a story. The year is 1933. The German economy is in a shambles. The war has left the country battered. The Treaty of Versailles has forced Berlin to pay war reparations. How much? 132 billion gold marks. That's some 31.4 billion US dollars. Germany is in debt. Germans are demoralized. There is social unrest. Two successive rounds of elections have failed to restore stability. There is post-war hyperinflation. There's unemployment, there's uncertainty. Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party decide to exploit this crisis. On the 30th of January, Hitler is sworn into power. He is the new leader of Germany. The rest, they say, is history. Moral of the story, financial distress and inflation have the power to change the course of history. And throughout this week, we told you what's happening around the world, how stocks are falling, how currencies are losing value, fuel is becoming more valuable, prices of basic commodities are going up. Tonight, we'll tell you what an inflation means, not for your purchasing power or the money in your bank, but for the world we live in. What does inflation mean for the world order? Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay, and this is our world. A conglomeration of democracies, authoritarian regimes, and constitutional monarchies. Will it remain this way post-inflation? Today our world is interconnected, it's close. There is free flow of trade. Will it remain this way after the financial crisis? You see, inflation affects politics, policies, global priorities, and poverty. And we'll talk about all four, starting with the first P, politics. Inflation is often called the mother of political change. I told you what happened in post-war Germany. Well, Europe is at war again. This war has contributed to inflation. There are protests the world over, and protesters can be unforgiving at polling booths. Ask former U.S. President Jimmy Carter. When he was in office, oil and food prices had shot up. Unemployment had jumped. Inflation brought Carter down. He lost re-election to Ronald Reagan. Today, food prices in the U.S. are up 10%. Fuel prices are up 8%. Come November, President Joe Biden faces midterm elections. Chances are inflation may seal this election. It could well change the course of American politics. In India, leaders know the link between inflation and elections. 
In 2014, when the Manmohan Singh government lost the parliamentary polls, inflation was said to be among the big reasons. Now that you understand what inflation can do to governments, consider this. Cut Become a life changer. Game changer. Currently, global inflation is over 7%. Food prices have gone up at least 7%. About 50 countries go to polls this year and the next. This includes Brazil, Israel, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Turkey. If prices continue to rise, these leaders may find themselves out of office. Because rising prices can topple governments. They can also change the fate of a country. Look at Venezuela. It has the largest oil reserves in the world. But where is it on the global map? It's in the throes of a political crisis and inflation. In fact, hyperinflation. Between 1973 and 2022, prices in Venezuela have gone up 3,729%. 3,729%. Let that sink in. And now allow me to also tell you this. That this is not the worst number. In February 2019, inflation in Venezuela had reached. Wait for it. 344,509%. 344,509%. By then, the Venezuelan currency was junk. They said using cash as toilet paper was more prudent than buying a roll. What happened then? More than 6 million Venezuelans left home. That's nearly 20% of the country's population. And what was once the richest country in Latin America is now struggling to stay relevant. No country wants to meet that fate. No country wants to be wiped out by inflation. So what do they do? We come to the next P, policies. Countries change their policies. All right. So, this is the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9. It says, the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. And this place ain't no different, right, when it comes to this verse. If all these other countries have faced what the daughter of Babylon is facing now, and they've fallen, this place is no different. It ain't nothing but a kingdom. And the only kingdom that's promised to stand forever and ever, even forever, is the kingdom of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. That's it. So this place is done. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Right. And the thing of it is, the Most High got his prophets speaking this, which is ultimately the Most High speaking this. Right? Um, you know, Scripture says, He that hear, you know, hear you, hear me. All right, so this ain't a man's um, mind speaking these words or forming the thoughts and forming the words to speak. This ain't that. This is the spirit of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai warning the people and telling the people, hey, the end is here. So, you know, get your spirit right. These are the signs. That's why all these epistles keep being made to show you the times that you're living in, right? So you can make that decision and, you know, that decision is between you and the Lord, right? But this place ain't no different from Egypt or Syria, right? Greece, damn sure ain't no different from Rome. This ain't nothing but an offshoot of Rome, right? But like I said, this the most high, this the most high speaking, man. Um, let me go to... Um, let me see. Let me go to the book of Amos. Chapter 3 and verse 7. It says, Surely Yahweh power will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So what that means is, once the prophets go to prophesying, things start to happen. Right? Especially if the prophet that's prophesying is prophesying of Yahweh by Shimei Shai. Now you got prophets out there that prophesy lies and speak about it in the scriptures too. Right? They said, I have dreamed, I have dreamed, but they have they speak lies, right? 
But if that prophet is speaking, thus saith Yahweh by Shimei Hawashai, and, and speaking truly and sincerely from the spirit of such, the Most High going to move on that behalf because it ain't the person. It's not the person whose name is on the line. It's the word of the Most High whose name is on the line. It's the name of Yahweh that's on the line. Right, so if his if he said it in his word and his word is true, that means it's gonna come to pass. Right, and Yahweh said he will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto the his servant, the prophets. Right, let me go to um the book of Jeremiah, chapter um twenty eight, and. Verse 8, it says, The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. All right? So, it's, that's just in our, it's in our blood. It's in our, it's a part of our family. It's being prophets. You know, speaking thus said the how. Right? And showing in the word. Thus said the how, not just this person where, you know, I had a dream and, you know, in the dream, the most high spoke to me that this, that, that, and the third going to happen. Those times are over with. That's why it's written in the word. Everything from beginning to end is written in the word. So you can't add nothing on to that because the word already done. It even speaks on that in Revelation 22. You can't add on to it. It's already said. The prophets that had that mindset and the prophets that were actually doing it are written in the book. So that's for a time. That ain't forever and ever, even forever. That's for a time. Even prophecy in itself is for a time because once a prophet, once a prophecy is fulfilled, it's over with. Ain't no more prophecy. That's it. Right? And like I said, scripture speaks about all the way up until a certain point. And once that certain point hit, there is no more prophecy. It's, it's over with. We in the kingdom, we good. All right? But this kingdom here has to fall. All right? In order for us to get there. And it looks like that that is exactly what Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai is doing. All right? Let me go to, um, let me see. Let me go to the book of Daniel. Actually, let me go to Psalms. Psalms chapter 22. And um, verse 28, it says, For the kingdom is Yahweh's, and he is the governor among the nations. Man don't control none of this, man. This is all Yahweh was shot, point blank period. Right? I know these devils are fighting. For survival, they fighting to go into this new world order that they really hope comes to pass. The Most High going, He going to allow them to taste it just a little bit, but it will not be fully um, um, seen through. Cause the Most High going to cut that thing short. I ain't speak about it in the Book of Job. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can find. I think it's Job twenty. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Yeah, Job chapter twenty and um, verse twenty-two. It says, "In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him, when he is about to fill his belly. So they gonna get a taste of it." it says, "Power shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him." And shall rain it upon him while he is eating. All right? The most high gonna cut that thing short. And how's he gonna cut it short? Verse 24, he shall flee from the iron weapon, and the bow of steel shall strike him through. It is drawn and cometh out of the body, yea. The glittering sword cometh out of his gall. Terrors are upon him. Most high gonna allow them missiles to tat this place up, man. Straight like that. That's thus said the Lord. That ain't thus said brother Abiah. That's in the word, man. That's prophecy. All right. So that's what they can be looking forward to. I know they're trying to run from it, but hey, it is what it is. So 
<laughs> you seeing it. You seeing it. You seeing it unfold right before your eyes. If you're paying attention to it. If you're not paying attention to it, it's gonna hit you like a thief in the night. It's gonna hit you hit you straight unawares. Like it's spoken of in Matthew twenty four, as in the days of Noah. But if you operate in the spirit of holiness to the best of your ability, to in the spirit of righteousness to the best of your ability, and you know, all through faith, then you see what's going on. All right? So they keep continue to watch, continue to pray. And Yahweh Bashim Al Shah will we will endure until the end and be saved. So with that, Yahweh Bashim Al Shah Rajazah, these precepts in this video were edifying. Call Holoyim Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah Bahashim Harakakwadash Shalom Yashallah.